what's going on guys professor here we're going to be talking about a new piece of hardware how to set it up and use it so if you're here uh thanks for dropping by hope this answers your questions we're going to be talking about the alessis <laughs> 6 649 so this is my buddy's. Uh, I honestly like it. It's a pretty nice piece of hardware, but I'm glad he let me borrow it for this tutorial. It's going to be simple to setting up like the MPK, but on a much bigger scale. So if you end up liking this piece of hardware, be sure, and you wanna get it, be sure to check out the Amazon link in the description. And as well, uh, be sure to check out the other things, but let's hop right on into setting this up, okay? First, of course, you need to plug it in. That should be uh, fairly obvious. And your plugs are gonna be on the uh, back side. All right, let's plug that in. And then let's turn it on. Oh yeah. Now, Windows is going to tell you it's setting up the device. That's fantastic, that's fine. All right, guys, so Windows has just told me the device is ready. Uh, you'll just kind of see it in here, uh, other devices. There it is. Now, the big thing we need to go to is our options in FL Studio, and we need to go to MIDI settings, all right? Now, when you're in MIDI settings, you need to go make sure that you enable this. Send to Master Sync, port one, or zero, synchronization to MIDI clock. I'm gonna do zero, and then I'm going to enable my MIDI right here. Same port, zero. Now we can check if the Alessis is on here. Um, nah, they just have the Photon X25. So we'll use the generic controller option, all right? And enabled, zero. Let's enable this one as well. And do, 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 zero. All right, so I've enabled both of these. Let's close it and let's open up an instance of Citrus. You could just go to add a uh, channel. You can go down to Citrus and let's see if we can play some notes. Great, that's already working. Now our pads are responding. Cool. So our pads will go after next. First, let's check out octaves. Check this out. All right, so octave up and down are gonna change where your placement are is on the keys. You also have things like your mod wheels where you can link to like, a number, let's link it to our volume. I'm gonna go to right click this. I'm gonna click link to controller and then it's gonna wait for me to either move a knob or to move a wheel. I'm gonna move the wheel. So now we have volume control with this. And we can link our pitch to this one. Check it out. Uh, link to controller, pitch. Check it out. Cool. All right, so you're gonna be able to do that with almost any synthesizer you have, all right? The big idea or the key thing is link to controller in linking these options. Notice how we have some knobs here. Link to controller. Boom. All right, see? Now I have EQs linked to it. I can also go into my mixer even and just link things like this to the controller. Volume outputs. Uh, of course, you know, you have your effect outlets. Let me make this smaller, Jesus. So in general, that's basically how we get around the knobs is you just need to know link to controller. These as well. These can be linked to almost anything within FL Studio. Now, let's uh, talk about the pads, all right? So basically, when it comes down to your pads, they're designed for FPC. So let's open up FPC, 
And these might, these are currently not synced in the right order. You'll see that the button I press does not correspond correctly to the squares on here. Basically, a way to easily fix that is go click on this arrow here and then go to layout. It's not in here, so we'll go to map notes for entire bank. Click this. Now, when you're mapping the notes, it's going to go from bottom left to right, then the second row left to right. So basically, we want to start at the bottom. Now, all of these are linked correctly, and you can even save this layout. I can save this layout. I'll call it, you know, my 649. Now I'll be able to load it next time. If something goes wrong, I can load my note layout. All right, now let's check it out, see? Everything is properly done. So we have our pads down, we have our wheels, and we have our knobs. Now, these are timings, and I assume it's gonna have to do with arpeggiation. Now, let's see if there's anything good to download with the drivers that could add options to it. Uh, now, guys, I've gone to uh, the Alessis website. Basically, I just typed in the VI49 into Google, went to this, you can go to your downloads uh, right here. And with this, you can download any updates or drivers that you might need. Now, for me, I haven't even put any drivers on this yet or updated. All I did was literally just plug it in. It's the first time it touched this PC. So you'll be able to do everything that I've done so far right now. Now let's uh, download the editor for Windows. Uh, editor will give you more control. So I'm gonna download this and we'll be right back guys after I'm done installing it. All right guys, now you'll see that I have the editor right here. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Now when you're doing stuff like this, uh, you will need to close FL Studio if you make any changes and send them to the RAM, all right? So I can get a preset, preset slots. You can send the preset to hardware after you make it, or you can load presets. Basically, your knobs, this is where you can control what they control, drum pads. I mean, there's not really a reason to come in here and do that because we've already done all of this within FL Studio. But if, like I said, you wanted to uh, mess with anything in uh, the actual bank itself. Let me turn on uh, this webcam. If you wanted to mess with anything actually in the RAM of the Alessis itself, you can do that here. You can get a preset or you can send the preset to hardware. Once you've designed everything as you've wanted it and changed it, boom, boom, boom. All I have to do is send the preset to hardware, save preset to hard drive, just get that going. Make sure you don't have FL Studio opened up or anything else while you do that because it might cause the program to crash. Then close it, we go back into FL Studio and it acts again like the way we to told it to. So let's talk about recording. I'm sure you guys want to understand how to do some live live recording with this, right? Check this out. Go make a spot on your playlist, make a new pattern, and extend it to four bars, and highlight, drag, and roll, okay? What I'm gonna do is just turn on my loop recording, and I'm gonna turn on my blend recording, and I'm gonna turn on my metronome. Now with loop recording, once it reaches the end of this, it'll go back to the beginning. With blend recording, if you have blend recording on, it won't overwrite or delete the notes each time it goes through a four bar thing. If I put a bunch of key notes in here and then it went over again without blend recording, it would delete the last inputs. So I'm gonna put on my blend recording and my overdub, all right? Go to here, 
click record notes and automation and uh, I'm gonna let it count down with three two one before I go okay so first let's just do a drum beat All right, so now we've got ourselves a pattern here that we've created. It doesn't sound amazing, we just made it off the top of our heads, but that's great. Now, you might be wondering, well, I wanna edit them separately. Of course, you can go in here and edit them, or you can go here and edit them. Oh, my things aren't on key. I can just go to uh, uh, Tools, and I can go to Quick Quantize, where it snaps everything to the beat. See, check it out. Now you're like, all right, you can also right click this pattern, check it out, and go to split by channel. What that does is it splits the pattern into the two different instruments. So see now how one of them is citrus and one of them is FPC. Basically take all of these concepts that we've built from modulation, linking knobs to specific things, drum pads and your keys, and uh, then the knowledge that you have with recording the playlist in, or recording patterns into the playlist, you can now compose beats, songs, tracks really quickly using the Alessis and FL Studios as well. FL Studio, excuse me, FL Studio as well. Um, I don't have any information regarding these buttons right now, but if I find out any, I'll let you guys know as soon as I do. And I don't have any information regarding these, but I'm sure you can link them within the editor that I downloaded and showed you guys. The octave up and down, this, this, and this is all I really need in FL Studio anyways. All right, guys. Um, I really like the Alessis. I think it's a great piece of hardware to use. I'm glad my friend let me borrow it. I'm gonna mess around with it a little bit, see what I can make. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the description below and uh, feedback as well. I'm always here to answer questions and see what I can do to help. Uh, be sure to check out more videos on the channel and subscribe. We're about to be at 10,000 subscribers. I'm very thankful for all of you guys being here, checking out my videos. And if you have any recommendations on another one, just set it up and hit it, all right? Guys, uh, thank you so much. Check out the shops, check out the songs, and this has been Professor, all right? Take it easy, guys. Keep on grinding. Peace. I feel like I'm drifting away and I'm stuck in my ways. Feel like I'm losing the day. I feel like I need me a pound. I'll break right down. They won't be smoking it down. Smoking it down and cruising around. Recycle, repeating the night. Yeah, feel like I'm living a life. And there's never been doubt in my sight, huh? El Chapo with the pesos and a long clip with the Draco. And I walk around with that poncho. Cause everywhere I go, I get wet, huh? She's stupid, she calling collect, huh?